Well, good morning and welcome everyone to the Veneer Family Football Complex at Kansas State University, the home of the Wildcats. I'm Wyatt Thompson. Last month, as you all know, we learned that the Wildcats would open the 2025 season in Ireland against Big 12 rival Iowa State in the Erlingus College Football Classic at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. That game will be played August 23rd of next year. It will be the fourth Erlingus Classic and the 10th college football game ever played at Ireland. The excitement level since that announcement from K-State Nation has been off the charts, as you might expect. It is my pleasure to introduce four individuals today who will play a big part in making this event possible. Leslie Wurzberger, Aer Lingus Administrator, Louise Thornton, Events and Operations Director, Brendan Meehan, Commercial Director, and U.S. Marketing Manager, Jana Hughes, who is from Dallas. I want to also recognize today Kansas State University President Richard Linton, also our Senior Vice President for External Affairs, Marshall Stewart, and then Greg Willems, the President of the K-State Foundation. Our first speaker today is a man who led Kansas State University Athletics since April of 2017. Please welcome our award-winning Athletic Director, he is Mr. Gene Taylor. Thanks, Wyatt. Uh, last time I saw Wyatt, he was in shorts and a t-shirt <laughs> on the Catbacker tour, so he, he cleans up pretty well. But um, thank you all for being here. I, I slapped this guy in the back because I've known John Anthony for a long time. He's a, he's a dear friend. Uh, he's been uh, asking me to be a part of this or us to be a part of this game for a long time. And for the longest time, I just didn't think it would work for us based on um, the games that I thought he was looking for us to play. And when he approached me, I think it was this summer or this earlier this spring, um, and said, hey, what about Iowa State, a conference game in 2025? And I was like, wow, that's a little different. That's a little different. <laughs> and I was still a little reluctant, I'll be honest with you. But I said, you know, I'm going to talk to Coach Kleiman, and we're going to see. And Coach was uh, not terribly enthusiastic at first until he found out from John that he should reach out to the schools that had been over there before. And he comes back in my office just a few hours later and said, yeah, let's do this. And at that point, uh, the, it was on, and we started getting into the, the planning. And I can't tell you how excited we are to be a part of this game. Again, I know John for a long time. I've seen the games over there. I've seen the national exposure that game brings to the programs that play in it. Uh, this year, ESPN's taking the game day over there for the, for the game against was Florida State and Georgia Tech. Um, so that exposure, and then to play a, a opponent like Iowa State, which both fan bases are, they, they travel very, very well. They're both, they both love their programs, and I think uh, our representation at, in, in Ireland is going to be phenomenal. I think the tie-in to the universities as well, both being land grants and the and wonderful opportunities with Ireland, uh, is really, really exciting for our university. But at the end of the day, it comes about the football players and the experiences for our staff and football players that have never had a chance to do something like this. It'll be a phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. Uh, I know the kind of games that they'll put on. I've seen it before. I know the kind of person John Anthony is and how detailed he is and what he does. Getting to know the folks from Ireland and, and what they're excited about and how excited they are to have us. and so. I just can't uh, tell you enough about how fun this is going to be. Now, I, I wish it would get here sooner, but to be honest with you, I know he's going to talk about he's got a football season to play this year before we get to 2025. But uh, a lot of planning will go into it. We're real excited. Can't thank John and the folks from Ireland enough to consider us for this game, and we're really excited to be a part of it. So thank you very much. Our next speaker is getting set to start year number six at Kansas State. He is one of the most consistent men in college football in what he does. K-State won a Big 12 championship in 2012, or um, I'm sorry, 2022. We've won three of them since I've been here. <laughs> That's a pretty good thing. He also was uh, a guy that led us to a championship of the Pop-Tarts Bowl last year. Help me welcome our head coach, Mr. Chris Kleiman. Well, it's great to be here. I don't know John as well as Gene does, but over the last <laughs> couple months, I feel like I've gotten to know him uh, really well. And uh, 
can't thank you enough, John, and Air Lingus for or this opportunity for uh, our program and our football team. And uh, you're right, Gene came to me uh, probably a couple months ago, and, and football coaches are kind of a uh, creature of habit and routine. And uh, I didn't know if it would be a great, I knew it would be a great opportunity, but I'm like, okay, how does that affect a lot of things? And I reached out to some coaches that I know in the profession really well that had been in that game. And the common theme was if we could do it every year, we'd do it every year. And uh, that resonated with me. I visited with a couple of our coaches, the Irishman coach Riley, and he was like, well, I'll go if you won't. And so uh, <laughs> I knew that uh, it was going to be received really well with our, with our staff. Uh, and then uh, when we surprised our players with it, uh, you could see the energy and the excitement of our guys. And, and it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity um, for these kids to experience something that they may never experience again uh, in their lifetime. And uh, for me, it's an opportunity for, for my wife and I to go experience something that we haven't experienced before. And so uh, you're right. What, we're, what our focus on uh, with the 2024 season being um, right upon us, uh, but I know that uh, this is something that uh, to start off in 2025, what a great opportunity for our university, for our football program to be on a worldwide stage and uh, not just uh, a regional stage or a national stage, but uh, the fact that um, we, we've had a pool party at my house at the end of fall camp and we've all watched a game and it's like everybody in the world is watching this game and how neat of an opportunity uh, that's going to be for, for our players and, and our fan base. And I know that... Uh, um, we're playing a terrific opponent in, in Iowa State, uh, and uh, both uh, institutions and programs will travel really well, but I know that the Cats will be uh, uh, painting that town green and painting it purple with, uh, with the K-Staters there. So can't uh, thank you enough uh, and excited about the opportunity. So thanks and go Cats. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate that. We are thrilled to have this next gentleman on our campus today. He is the co-founder of the Erlingus College Football Classic. Ladies and gentlemen, the guy they've been talking about, John Anthony. Good to have you here, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Gene and Coach. Thank you. Uh, I don't deserve the nice comments, but, uh, but the gratitude we have for you for accepting this invitation uh, is hard to contain our excitement. We're so thrilled to, to have K-State in this game, as Gene said, we've had our eyes on you for many years, and so now here it is a reality. And, uh, and special thanks to Coach. Um, anyone who's worked with football coaches, he, he underput, understated how, uh, how their thinking might go on these things. <laughs> but um, at the end of, of, a, of a thorough conversation, he quickly saw the value uh, for, his, for his team, for his student athletes. Um, to have really a transformational experience, and, and that's what he's about. And so uh, thank you very much for accepting this invitation. Um, our <clears throat> tagline for the Aer Lingus Classic is much more than a game. And so I want to especially thank uh, the Consul General uh, of the Southwest region for the, for the country of Ireland, Robbie Hull, who will be up here in a moment and tell you about more things around much more than a game. Um, so uh, we're grateful that he made the trip here today. Um, and what the government support means to us to be able to do this along with Aer, Aer Lingus as our title partner. Um, I'll quickly touch on, on three things. I'm going to talk about the game, uh, YK State, and what you can expect. So uh, Gene touched on a little bit why it mentioned that this will be our fourth Aer Lingus Classic, 10th game played in Ireland. Um, we've got a sellout. We had a sellout last year. We're gonna, we've got a sellout for the game coming up this August, and we fully expect we're going to have a sellout next year. This game has become a significant marked event on the social and sporting calendar in Ireland, as well as now in the week zero of the college football season for the American college football fan. So um, it provides an experience uh, to the student athletes, as we said, that they will remember and talk about for the rest of their lives and for the fans also, where they get a chance to come take over a, a European city and, and show the world what the, what the Wildcat Nation is. And, and so <clears throat> that stage for the university is so significant. Um, to be out of the country, to be in Europe playing a game, and to have the week zero stage in the US. The, the television audience of the last two years since we moved into week zero has averaged over four million viewers per game. You just don't get that um, throughout the year anywhere else. So uh, that's a huge thing. This year we've got college game day. ESPN is bringing overseas for the first time ever out of the US. Um, don't know if they will in 25, but I can assure you we're going to try. 
um, and just the extension of that. Even two days ago, the the College Game Day podcast with Reese Davis and Pete Thamel spent five minutes talking about this year's Week Zero game, and they got into next year's and talking about you. They were talking amongst themselves. You think we'll get to go back? You know, that was on their podcast. Wow, <laughs> Kansas State, uh, Iowa State playing in 25. Will, will ESPN broadcast that? Will we get to go back? So, um, you know, it's, it's not easy to get national media coverage in May for your football program, um, but there, there they were talking about it. So uh, the exposure for this um, locally, nationally, internationally is just great for the, for the entire uh, Kansas State University. Um, YK State, um, I think simply put, it is a combination of football quality and fan quantity. So um, you're playing really high quality football. We noticed that, that's what we want. Um, and your fans are so loyal and so rabid and so strong that they follow everywhere you go. That's, that's the formula we're looking for. So uh, we know we've got that here. Um, the idea of having a rivalry game with Iowa State is huge for us. We haven't, um, that's what I think when Gene was alluding to of what makes sense for him, who, who to look at when I came to him with this, um, this is the best rivalry game we'll have had there yet. And so to be able to have a Big 12 conference game to kick off the season, uh, quite frankly, with two teams that could face each other again in a conference championship game is really significant. Um, to have two fan groups battle it out to who's, who's going to have more, more fans there. Um, <laughs> We've generally been a little more one-sided than that, so um, that we're just we just think that K State um, with this Iowa State matchup is a perfect perfect fit for what we're looking to do. And then um, lastly, what you can expect, I think you, uh, any everybody who goes can expect one of the best weeks of their life. So um, we've talked about the, the, the players, and, and that's obviously what we talked about most with Coach. But for every fan, it's just it's a trip of a lifetime. Um, we're always pleasantly surprised at how many people don't have a passport when this starts um, from the fans or the, or the players. We had um, the first time we ever did this, but it happens every year. Someone will come up to me in Ireland, if not dozens of people, and it's very often, I used to be able to say a, an older couple, now I think that's my age, but um, <laughs> the, and I hate to be sexist about this, but very often a woman will come up to me and say, you're responsible for why we're here? I said, well, I've got something to do with it. And she'll say, oh, thank you. I've always wanted to go to Europe, but he would never go. <laughs> um, this, this finally got him to take me to Europe. And so um, the, the typical fan uh, that we've seen will stay for a week plus. They'll go, uh, they'll be in Dublin on the weekend of the game, but before and after they'll extend the trip. They'll go to three cities around, around Ireland and, and just have a really memorable time. That's part of why we get so much great support from the government um, and from our partners in Ireland, um, because the impact across the country is so significant. And so um, I think that's what, that's what we encourage people to do. That's what they'll enjoy. And that's what they'll come home talking about. Um, but, but on that weekend in Dublin, it will be unlike anything you've ever seen. It'll be more than you've, more than you've seen at an Alamo Bowl and some of the other great places. By the way, somehow we want our logo up on one of this. I know we're not a bowl game, but it's even more cool than a bowl game. So um, to see the purple in Dublin when you, when you take, over, uh, take over that city is going to be one of the more cool things uh, that you've ever been a part of and certainly something we'll, we'll be proud of forever. So we look forward to it. We encourage everyone to, uh, to jump on board. Uh, as of now, with this, uh, this, this timing, uh, information's fully available and for sale with the ticket packages, the hospitality packages, the travel packages, and that's at catstoireland.com. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. And we look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Our final speaker today is the Consul General of Ireland. Help me welcome to the microphone, Mr. Robert Hull. Thank you very much. Good morning, um, everyone. Delighted to be here with you today at Kansas State University. I'm excited that K-State and Big 12 football are coming to Ireland for the first time uh, in 2025. And we're really looking forward to welcoming your players, your coaches, 
uh, the staff of the university and all your fans uh, to Ireland. As John has said, these occasions really are much more than a game. And we at the Consulate, which is the Irish government's office to this region, and we're tasked with building closer relationships between Ireland and Kansas, are really excited about the opportunities that this game offers. For games that have happened in the past, um, we've hosted business and political delegations uh, around the game, and we look forward to doing the same in 2025. The games are also a great opportunity to strengthen the relationships that exist between our universities as well. And so when I came out from Ireland to take over my role, I got in touch with John and his team and I said, you know, there's great football being played in this region. There are great fans. I really hope you're looking at this region for one of the games. And they said that they were. And so I was just thrilled whenever they got in touch to say that K-State had accepted their offer to be able to come and play. And I think it's a great choice Kansas is a state with strong heritage ties to Ireland. Over 11% of Kansans at the last census said that they had some form of Irish heritage. We hope all of them are going to come to Ireland in 2025. <laughs> um, but also, our, our links extend beyond the kind of the historic relationships as well. Trade between Kansas and Ireland is growing. Um, at the moment, in 2022, that bilateral trade was valued at just under $200 million. Uh, US dollars. We've Irish companies in Kansas employing over uh, 850 um, people. There's also strong educational ties with this university um, already, multiple short-term study abroad programs, uh, and 50 students, I think, that are traveling for longer study uh, each year. And we really believe that the game can serve as a catalyst uh, for more business and educational contacts as an opportunity for people uh, and companies from Kansas to encounter Ireland. And it's why, as a government, we've invested significantly um, in these um, events. Additionally, with Ireland now being the ninth largest source of FDI into the United States, uh, it's a great opportunity for Kansas to showcase itself to Ireland. And we now have close on half a million Irish people traveling uh, to the US for holiday each year. So again, an opportunity to promote Kansas and why people should be coming here. But regardless of the reasons uh, why people travel for the game, we can assure you that you will have a fantastic world-class experience in Ireland. The island of Ireland is a truly wonderful place to visit. Our scenery is stunning. Our people are friendly and welcoming. Our countryside is green. Our rugged coastline will take your breath away. And the good news is it's never been easier to get to Ireland. There's direct flights out of 18 gateway destinations. So we really look forward in 2025 to extending a very warm Kedmila Falsha, uh, 100,000 welcomes to K-State uh, and to all your fans. Thank you very much. Robert, John, thank you for being here today. Uh, just a couple of quick things. I um, want to mention that, as John said, uh, the 2025 Aer Lingus College Football Classic uh, things are on sale now, tickets, packages, and what have you. So visit cats2ireland.com. want to mention to the media that after this presser is over and a photo opportunity or two, uh, we'll bring in legendary track coach Cliff Revelto, who announced his retirement earlier this week. He'll be available for a few questions, so please keep that in mind. That will follow Gene, Coach, uh, John, and Robert with questions. So if the media is ready, we'll open it up to questions for these four. Yeah, for Gene, you talked about having this opportunity before. Why now, and why did the Iowa State game kind of turn your head? Well, last time I was over there was 1996, and it was a while ago, um, and I was a director of ops at the, you know, in the, in the Naval Academy, and – and so my experience was very different, but it was, I just remember how much fun it was and um, how friendly the Ireland people were. I mean, they welcomed us with open arms. I just remember, even today, we're talking about it as a family, that experience over there. Um, I run into former Naval Academy players that still talk about that game. Um, and so that just always, that memory's been ingrained in my brain for a long time. And so when John and I started talking about it, you know, I had an interest, but again, I knew that to get a coach to agree to that is always a challenge, particularly when you come to a conference game. And 
uh, when I started talking to John a little bit more about Iowa State, it, it piqued my interest because it was a different game. I was just always thinking kind of a non-conference opponent that early in the season. And, and then, I, you know, my brain starts working well. we got to get to the Big 12 and how's coach going to feel. But as soon as coach and I talked about it and his enthusiasm, I'm like, all right, let's, let's get this done. And I just know watching the game now, they, that, that stadium looks gorgeous. I know operationally that's going to be extremely well run and, and just really excited about our, our fans and our kids to be able to experience Ireland because it, there's nothing. They really, really love Americans, and they'll love us over there. Coach, uh, how difficult was it to surrender the Iowa State home game since that's become such a big rivalry? Yeah, uh, that's a part of it for sure. Um, but uh, I, I think uh, the opportunity uh, to take the game uh, overseas and, and to do it, 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 uh, it trumped that, honestly. Um, I think about – can't think just about yourself, about the staff. I think about 120 kids – that um, shockingly, most of them had passports. By the way, when we when we asked them to raise their hand, how many people had passports? I bet we had eight. I bet we had eighty percent, eighty percent that went to Cancun we learned, without. We learned yeah. nil. Yeah. Feed spring break in Mexico. I there you go. So it. that's why they. That's why you need to get your passport so you can go to spring break over there, Fitz. Um, it was just an opportunity for these guys to experience something that not a lot of college kids are going to be able to do, especially college football players. And have that opportunity to to put Kansas State on that kind of a, uh, that kind of a stage, um, and and the fact that it is a conference game, and it starts us off. That's something that uh, it's been a long time since I've been a part of a conference opener um, to open up a season, uh, and then to have it as as a week zero. Um, everybody in the country, everybody in the world is going to be watching that football game, and what a stage for the Big Twelve, what a stage for for Kansas State football. Uh, I got one for Chris, John, and Robert, but I'll start with, with Coach. Um, what advice have other people given you about starting week zero and playing four games in four weeks right off the bat? Not anything right now. Uh, honestly, it was just more about the experience to go over there and how uh, a number of, of coaches and different people that I talked to said they'd do it again every year. Um, yeah, there's going to be some logistical challenges, I, I'm, I'm assuming, but um, those are things that – you know, we're going to play the week after for sure. That 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 was the first thing. Is are we going to play the week after? And uh, some of the people that I talked to encouraged us to play the week after. And uh, that's kind of as far ahead as we've gotten. We're going to visit with the Big 12 about, you know, we're going to get an extra bye week in there of trying to get that maybe after the non-con and then finding another one um, somewhere in the middle of the season. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just – the logistics of it, we haven't looked at everything other than the fact of the one thing that I did ask Gene was, okay, what are we doing with the next week? And the more I talked to people, uh, the more people told me how important it was to play the next week. Even though you're going to be a little bit jet lagged and stuff, it's early in the season and you want to continue that continuity of playing games. And for Robert, we've obviously seen the NFL go overseas and play in other markets successfully. What do you think it is about Ireland and, and your country that makes college football important over there? Well, I think what um, makes it great for people coming out is the welcome. I think we like to pride ourselves as being a, a really welcoming country. We're also a country that loves sports. Um, it's a great place um, to visit for that. Irish fans uh, are some of the most enthusiastic um, that you will see. Um, we're a great destination too um, for golf. We're hosting the Open. Um, in 2026 and the Ryder Cup is coming to Ireland uh, as well the next time uh, it's in Europe. Um, I think um, as well there's a growing interest in the sport. We're seeing some Irish players now really making the mark uh, in some of the international player pathway program into the NFL. So college football is a great way to kind of combine that passion and love um, of sports uh, I think together uh, in a great visit that will be really memorable for everyone that comes. This is kind of a lighthearted one for you, John, but these are two fan bases that are pretty well known for drinking a lot of beer at games. Do you think you guys <laughs> are prepared to meet that demand? <laughs> Issue challenge to the pubs of Dublin to, uh, to, to make, hold up. Other questions? All good? Okay. We'll do some photo ops here. Again, thanks to these gentlemen and all of the fine people that are here that represent this.
We're looking forward to the 2024 football season. There's no doubt about that. But 2025 in Ireland sounds pretty great. Go Cats. Thanks for being here.